Heavenly Father, all at the same time. Amen. Uh, it's a blessing to have the opportunity to talk to Him. Because He, he tells us that we should talk to Him all the time. All right, all right. He tells us that we should ask Him of anything that we need. So we some will come asking this morning, some will come thanking him, some will come praising him this morning for what he has done and what they need this morning. So we going first thing we just gonna thank him for all that he has done for just waking us up this morning. Amen. 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 That's enough right there. Amen. He woke us up this morning. Then he gave us a mind to come out to the house of worship. Yeah. And uh, we found our way here in the snow. So that's a blessing. So let us pray for one another. Uh, lift one another up to him. Uh, let's pray for our pastor. Let's lift him up. Amen. Amen. We should always lift him up. Let's use our soul watch. Pray for the sick and shut in, wherever they might be. Let's uh, pray for those who don't know Christ and part of this, this morning. Oh Lord our God, the maker and creator of all things, the one that sits high and look low and that knows all about us. We stand here this morning just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us. You woke us up this morning, Father, that allowed us to see a brand new day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Been coming since the beginning of time. You woke us up this morning, Father, and we had the activity of our limbs that we was able to move around our homes and find that everything was all right, Father. Then you give us the desire to come out to worship and praise and thank you and lift up your holy name, Father. Help us to lift up your holy name and praise in you this morning, Father, for all that you have done, Father. You, 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 you've been so good to us, Father. That right now, if we had a thousand tongues, we wouldn't be able to thank you enough, praise you enough, uh, say hallelujah enough this morning, Father. All right, all right. Because you're so good, Father. Father, we come asking that you forgive us for all our many transgressions this morning, Father. We stand here this morning, Father, realizing that we need you, need you Lord. and we can't do anything without you, Father. So mm -hmm. Father, help us, Father, as we try to walk this highway and share the gospel as we go, Father. Help us to be bold and tell us someone, Father, that Jesus died on the Capitol yeah. Cross, Father. That early on Sunday morning. He got up with all the power in his hand and yet he still lived, Father. Let's help us to be able to, as we walk, that we're not afraid to tell somebody about your son, Jesus, Father. We come this morning, Father, I ask you to bless our pastor this morning, Father. Touch him, Father, like only you can, Father. And you, you, you gave him to us, Father. You gave us a pastor after your own heart, Father. We thank you this morning, Father. Bless him, Father. Then bless us that we follow, Father. Be obedient to your will, Father. Your will. Your will. Bless us this church, Father. And just touch each member one by one. You know what we stand in need of, Father. Some of us need our body touched this morning, right, Father. Right. Some one need our mind regulated this yeah. morning, Father. Regulate our mind this morning, right. Father. Thank you, Lord. Touch our, just touch. 
touch us this morning, Father, because we know that sometimes we can get the trailer to your will, Father, and we need you in so many different ways, Father. Some need money in our pocket. Just, just so many things that we stand in need of. Help us to not to be ashamed to ask whatever we need, Father. And let us not to be ashamed to just give you all the right. glory and all the honor, Father. Bless the sick and afflicted, wherever they might be this morning, Father. We know we have sick out, Father, but just touch them this morning, Father. Touch the family, Father, as they go through it, Father. Bless, bless the Marine family, Father, as they go through, Father. Comfort them, Father, as they go through their time of loss right now, Father. Just lift them up to you this morning. Bless those who don't know you in the free part of that sin this morning. We lift them up to you. Bless them, Father. Let them know, Father, that you saw them stand, sitting out in the artist's congregation this morning. You saw their hearts heavy, and they want to come now, Father. For some reason, they sat down too. But touch them, Father. Give them the strength to come forth, Father. And just give their lives to you, Father, so we can give you praise and all the honor, Father. We don't want no soul to be lost. We know you don't want no soul to be lost, but we don't want no soul to be lost either, Father. And just give them the courage to come forth, Father, and say, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. I believe that Jesus died on Friday and early this Sunday morning that he got up. I believe that, Father. Touch right now. Let the word penetrate their mind, their hearts, and their spirit, Father. Let them come, come now, Father. That's what must I do to be saved. In your Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So I'll say 
Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then touch ye their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man knoweth. But they went. But when, but they, when they went, were departed, spread abroad his fame in all their country. Yeah. Yeah. I simply want to talk about Jesus restored the sight to blind men. Wow. Wow. Jesus restored the sight Man. to blind men. Wow. I don't know what it's like to be blind. I've never been blind, but I believe that there are some clear, concise, and conclusive assertions that we can make about the deficiency of vision. Those persons that suffer from blindness can still move. Amen. Just because you lack sight doesn't mean that you can't move. No. The other thing about blindness is that you have movement but not direction. Well, A blind person can move but they're not sure of the direction that they're taking. Because the consequence of being blind, ultimately, is a lack of direction. Which means, brothers and sisters, that there's some folk who can see, but they're still blind. They can move, but they have no sense of direction. And I believe that there are several of you in this room today, male and female, who are really just seeking God right now for some direction 
begin your life. Wow. wow. Faced with a challenge. <laughs> it hasn't stopped you from moving, but you're not sure of where you're going. Right. If you would take off your spiritual disguise and be real and candid to them, come on, God. Come on, God. perhaps you may be thinking in your mind, I love the Lord, yeah. but I'm not sure where my life is going. Wow, 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 wow. I love the Lord. I love Richmond. I love my mom. I love my pastor. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. my brothers and sisters in Christ, but I've got to do something uh, that, that <coughs> occupies my time because I'm really not sure the, the direction that I'm supposed to be going in. And I believe well, the greatest attack of the enemy huh. is to attack a man with no direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the enemy understands that man has to spearhead his family. Yes, sir. He has to give leadership in the home. <laughs> he has to give leadership in the church. He has to give leadership uh, most of the time on his job. He is even influential with his family and friends. And so what the devil will attempt to do is not necessarily take your life. He'll try to take your direction. And in doing so, uh, he wants you to hurt yourself and possibly take your own life. You do know John 10.10 10 said, The thief cometh not but for to kill, yeah. to steal, and to here in Matthew 9 that help us have a sense that we are still with the Lord in dark times where we have no direction. Come on, God, come on. Interestingly enough, if you like the Bible, in order to rest you, <coughs> the text said that two blind men follow Jesus. <laughs> if you can read the Bible, something ought to pinch you when All you right. read Jesus two blind men. men. Come on, wow. come on, God, make it play. Yeah. 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 It's interesting to know that the two men are only familiar with darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are behind the light. And it's not the case that the light wasn't shining. Come on. It is a case that these men have no direction yeah. because of the, the deficiency of sight. Yeah. Yeah. And that's important for us to understand. Yeah. 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 Because what this text wants to, uh, to presuppose to us is that you can be behind Jesus yeah. and still have some moments yeah. where you don't know where you're going. Yeah. 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 It's not that Jesus' life had gone out, but it's because there's something defective and deficient inside of you uh, that's not allowing you to see him clearly. Two blind men follow Jesus. And your question to me, Brother Pastor, how can two blind men follow Jesus? And I've got an even more interesting question. The thing that interests me about the text is not that the two blind men followed Jesus. Uh -huh. The thing that interests me more is how did the blind men find each other? Because when you're walking in the dark, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. the first thing you need to do is examine your partnership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the text clearly suggests that both men are blind, which means they can't see each other, let alone Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did they come together? They are associated because of their mutual effect. All right, all right. And the thing I need to say to somebody in my honor this morning is you need to be careful who your partners are. All right. Because they may reveal what's wrong with you. Come on, God. Come on, God. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. You got to be careful who your partners are because who you hang with may reveal what's defective in your own life. Well, well, the crowd you keep. Yeah, yeah. The company you entertain, yeah. the homies you run with. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I got too much wrong with me for somebody else to be revealing what's wrong with me. Yeah. I don't need to be with somebody else that's blind. I need to be around somebody that can see and direct me into an area of change. That's why homosexuals are around homosexuals. That's why lesbians are around lesbians. That's why players are around players. Wow. Yeah. That's why hormones are around hormones. Well. That's why alcoholics are around alcoholics. Okay. Crackheads are around crackheads. Yeah. They, they identify with each other yeah. and they agree on a mutual lifestyle. Yeah. Wow. They share the same body. Yeah. They share the same joint. Yeah. They share the same news because they agree on their lifestyle. Yeah. Because they have what's called kindred spirits. Oh, wow. Wow. You ever wondered how people got together? Yeah. And you ask them, how did y'all become cool? Yeah. 
I, I didn't know y'all knew each other. Well, that's because when spirit identifies spirit, well, you begin to link up with people who have kindred spirit. Well, that's true. All yeah. right. And you've got to be careful now because your friendship will reveal what your defects. Yeah. That's why I'm concerned about people who, who don't want to be at church. Could it be that they have mutual lifestyle in us with God. those who don't even want to be bothered with Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 If you want to be a friend, you need a friend that can check you and then cover you at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what's called friendship. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, another sermon I have later on, we're talking about uh, how Batman and Bruce Wayne is the same person, yeah. but everybody needs an Alfred. <laughs> to deal with both Batman and Bruce Wayne. That's another sermon. I like that. I like that. I like that. You don't just need a friend that'll confirm your carnality and celebrate with you. You need somebody that'll check you and then cover you. When, when you're walking in the darkness, the first thing you need to do is examine your partnership. Because your partnerships may be the reason you remain in darkness as long as you do. The second thing you need, not only examine your partnerships, but engage on a divine path. Mm -hmm. The text says they follow Jesus. Yeah. Blind. And, they, and they say to him, son of David, have mercy on us. Uh -huh. yeah. And they follow Jesus blind all the way into a house. Uh -huh. And Jesus doesn't respond to their requests till he gets to a house. Which means that men had to follow Jesus for a while until they got to the house where he finally responded. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, sometimes engaging on a divine path means that you have to uh, that you have to do what these blind men did. Yeah. That means entrust your life into somebody that's got vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way that two blind men can follow Jesus for a period of time without being connected to somebody who can see Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you would tell the truth today, one of the reasons you're where you are in your faith is not because you got the Holy Ghost alone. It's because your mama was praying for you when you were out there fool in the streets. Because your aunt interceded for you while you were out there acting crazy. She was seeking love for you because you were too blind to seek him for you. There are times on this Christian walk where you can't find the Lord on your own. You've got to hook up with somebody who can lead you to him. You ain't always where you've been in the Lord. Somebody had to carry you until you were able to stand on your own. I don't know about you, but but uh, somebody prayed for me. Come on, God. Yeah. Had me on their mind. Yeah. Took the time to pray for me. Yeah. And you know what? I'm glad they prayed. I'm sure enough glad they prayed for me. There are times in your life you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know what's next. Yeah. You can't see your way. You got to hook up with somebody that's got vision mm -hmm. and walk with them until Jesus decides to move in your life. Mm -hmm. But here's another lesson here. When you engage in a divine path, sometimes that darkness includes a waiting period where Jesus wants to exercise your patience. You got to examine your partnerships, engage yeah. in the divine path. And then sometimes when you're in, you're in the dark, you got to Exercise patience. Notice in the text two blind men follow Jesus to a house. And then following Jesus, he says none to them. Which means uh, that according to this text means to walk without a word. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, when God's got you waiting, you still got to walk with him. Yeah. Even though he ain't talking to you. Come on, God. Right. Yes, sir. There yes, sir. are times when the word won't have a word But they wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew this word. He'll intentionally make you wait to teach you to walk without a word. Well, let me say it this way. There, there are those of you in school, you either in elementary school, middle school, high school, or college. And from time to time, you get what's called a quiz or an exam. Wow. And the point of these exams is to show you what you've learned and where you really are. Yeah, yeah. And so this is what happened with exams. Uh, the teacher, he or she, will put a test in front of your face yeah. and then stop talking to you. Mm -hmm. 
Now they'll be in the room with you. Yeah, yeah. Watch it. You agonize, sweat, and work. But they won't say a word. Come on now. Oh, they'll be in the classroom with you. They'll be silent. Come on, because, but they're silent because you're yes, being tested. Uh, yeah. For yes, those of us here this morning, yeah. if God's not talking to you, it could be that you're being tested. Yeah. Or he hadn't left you. Well, uh, it, it's not that you've been abandoned. Well, it's not that he doesn't care. Yeah. It's not that he's forgotten you. He's, he's right here in the room. Right. He's trying to test you on, to see if he can pull out of you what he put in you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you oh, have to be yeah. determined yeah. Yeah. to pass. The too many of us are failing the test yeah. because we give up too soon. Well, you you had to be determined that if you can just hold on after a while, well, you'll be able to graduate soon or come long. Or at least, like I did, thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right. And then PC's seats back, oh, thank you. <laughs> You'll come out saying, bless your name. Thank you for this test that's brought the best out of me. If he ain't talking to you, doesn't mean he's left you. Right. It just means he's testing you. Yes, sir. You make you wait, but he'll be there the whole time without saying a word to you. Because the teacher doesn't talk during test time. Yeah. The teacher already has had you in class. Yeah. And what he or she is trying to do is see if you've learned what they've told you. Right. When they spoke to you, so the next time you'll be ready for the test. Yeah. And the reason you get the test is because the teacher is trying to pull out of you what they put in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometime on this Christian journey, you've you got to learn how to walk <coughs> without a word. All right. You do know that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. The evidence yeah. of things not seen. Yeah. You, you don't walk uh, by sight anyway. You walk by faith. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever God wants you uh, to see the kind of faith you really have, he'll, he'll walk you without talking to you. And yeah. you'll have to yeah. trust Amen. what's holding on to you. My good yeah. friend, yeah. Dr. C. E. McLean, said it this way. Uh, you ought to trust him even if you can't trace him. Well, 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 well. Watch the text. There are two blind men walking behind Jesus. Mm -hmm. He doesn't talk to them yeah, until yeah. it gets in the house. Well, the history of the text suggests that this is a type of headquarters of Jesus somewhere in Capernaum. Uh -huh. And Jesus is familiar with the house that he's in. Mm -hmm. But the blind men can't see what house they're in. Mm -hmm. And when they get in the house, that's when Jesus talks to them in a place where they don't know where they're at. And when he asks them, when he, he gets them in the house where they don't know where they're at, he asks them, do you believe I'm able to do this? I want to suggest that was strategic. Because if you know anything about blind people, the worst thing you can do with a blind person is rearrange their furniture. <laughs> but Jesus waits until he gets the blind men in the house where they're unfamiliar with the furniture. Then ask questions about their belief. Mm -hmm. Because your belief is not valid until you get to a place where you're not in control. Wow. Well, There's some people in the room today who are here because you lost full control of your life. Jesus is now asking you, do you believe that I can do it? Uh, that I've moved, now that I've moved your furniture around. Wow. Wow. You used to know where everything was. Wow. Uh, you used to have people you could count on. Mm -hmm. But now the Lord has taken some folk out of your life. Yeah. And then he's taken some things out of your life and rearranged that which with you were familiar with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you look around your life and your life looks unfamiliar. Yeah. And now Jesus is asking your question, do you believe I can do this? Yeah, yeah. After examining your partnerships, after you engage in the divine path and exercise patience, now you have to expand your perspective. Believe the Lord in an unfamiliar place. They say to him, yes, Lord. They're now ready for a miracle because there's been a progression of divine revelation in the text. Understood. When they first talked to Jesus, they called him son of David, yeah. which is his political title. Mm -hmm. When Jesus questioned them, he said, do you believe that I am? Which is his historical title. Amen. The children of Israel were in Egyptian slavery. He introduces himself on, as I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when they respond to him, they call him Lord. Yeah. Which is his personal type. Yeah. Well, well, In other words, I better move from your political to your historical to your personal. Mm -hmm. Because a king can give mercy, yeah. but only God can work a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Are you ready for God to do something supernatural? You need to graduate your view of God. All right. he, he's just not my king. He's my God. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just not my God. He's my Lord. Yeah. He is my personal Savior. Yeah. All right. All right. And, and, and my life is in his total control. And I'm wondering about us this morning. What would God do for you if you tell him yes, even though you can't see? Wow. What would God do for you if while you're in this church right now, he could get a yes out of you while you're in a dark time? Wow. Wow. Let's just take 10 seconds and give him a yes. Just yeah. 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. 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 And what will you believe God for that if God can get a yes out of your spirit while you're getting a no from him if you still worship him? Mm -hmm. Tell him yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I don't have everything I want. Yes, but yes, Lord. I I'm not living in the house I want to live in, but yes, Lord. Yeah. I'm sick in my body, but yes, Lord. There's death in my family, but yes, Lord. I'm not where I want to be, but yes, Lord. I may awake at night sometimes, my pillow is wet with tears, but yes, Lord. And the answer will be yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your will. Come what may, I'm still telling you. To I am to Lord. And the text says, when he got a yes, Lord, out of me, the text says that Jesus touched their eyes. When he got a yes, Lord, out of them, Jesus touched their eyes. When Jesus got a yes, Lord, out of them, he, he touched wasn't, what wasn't working. Uh, when he got a yes, Lord, out of them, he, he put his hand on the area of their life that no longer functioned. And, and what do you think he'll do if he gets a yes, Lord, out of you? Come on, man. Could it be he'll touch that area of your life that ain't working? Well, Which means he'll put his hand on it. We used to sing a song at Cornerstone years ago. I put it all in his hand. Yes. This and that, I put it all in his hand. He can handle it. That's a fact. I put it all in his hand. No matter how great or small, he's the master of it all. I put it all, yes, I put it all in his hand. Whatever the problem, I put it all in his hand. I know that he can solve it. I put it all in his hand. No matter how great or small, he's the master of it all. I put it all, yes, I put it all in his hand. Text said the eye will they were able to see. And then one last thing, and I'm through. I'm not going to move you along. We know it's snowing outside. But the text says Jesus told them, don't say nothing to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Question to Jesus is raised, how can a man who used to be blind hide the fact that he can see? Yeah. Yeah. The text is clear they were disobedient. They went right away and put it on Facebook, Twitter, message. Instagram and even the Palladium. And the list goes on. The day the day they do. The list goes on. And, uh, you can hear what I'm saying. Jesus, you're a big dog. I can see now. <laughs> they didn't just tell one person. They told the whole country. Yes, they were disobedient. Yes, Jesus said don't do it. Yes, yeah, but that was the first thing they did. Yep. When you're walking in the office, he finally brings you out. He'll extend your privileges. Yeah. And here it is, even though they were disobedient, mm -hmm. they could still see. Mm -hmm. There's some of us in here today where we were disobedient, but God did not retract our miracle. Mm -hmm. He let us keep our blessing. Yeah. Yeah. He let you keep the house. Mm -hmm. He let you see keep the car. Even though you've been bad, God's been good. Yeah. 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 What that means is their request in verse 27 legitimizes verse 31. What they asked for was a miracle. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm sorry, was not a miracle, but what they asked for was mercy. Uh -huh. And in case all of us don't know what mercy is, mercy uh, holds back what I do deserve. Right. While grace gives me what I don't yeah. deserve. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've been disobedient. But I still got my miracle. Yeah. He didn't take it back, but he kept on blessing me. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody here know that the Lord has been merciful to you? Yeah. Anybody here know after he's blessed you, 
that you were disobedient, you did what you wanted to do, went where you wanted to go, and said what you wanted to say, but he still blessed you. And the Lord still allowed you to walk in Mount Island this morning. Anybody here know God will bring you out of the dark. And when he brings you out, you ought to thank him because he's been merciful to you. Do I have a man here uh, that God has been merciful to you? Do I have some women in here that know God has been merciful to you? why we're able to come here this morning, it was because of the mercies of God. Yes. The psalmist says it best when he deals with the mercies that extend into and throughout eternity where he said his mercy endureth forever. Anybody grateful God's been merciful to you? You did some things last week. Did some things last year that uh, he shouldn't even have let you come to church for. But had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have died in your sin. But what is it that kept you? Who is it that preserved you? And I have to say, nobody but Jesus. Nobody but the Lord. The Holy Spirit in front of me, guiding me in the altar. God all around me because he's everywhere at the same time. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. I'm just surrounded by it. And then I got to ask the question at the chin, tagging along behind me. Goodness and mercy, follow me all the day. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light. Anybody here, did you stay in darkness? If it wasn't for Jesus, you would have died in darkness. But the Lord pulled you out of darkness. And now you can see where you're going. The secular song says it this way. I can see clearly now the rain is coming. I can see all the obstacles in my way.
Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God as we commune. 